Demon Hunter in Hearthstone was released in 2020, but the game itself was released 6 years before that, which means Demon Hunter missed out on 13 of Hearthstone's expansions. Join me as I travel back to Hearthstone's oldest expansions and imagine how Demon Hunter would fit into it all. I've already made Demon Hunter cards for Goblins vs Gnomes in the Grand Tournament, so in today's video we'll be starting off with the expansion Whispers of the Old Gods. Whispers introduced 9 cards for each class, with 1 legendary each, so the legendary I made for Demon Hunter is Grand Empress Shaxir. Death to all who dare challenge my empire! Shaxir is a 4 mana 1 7 legendary minion with rush and tradable. In addition to that, she will gain plus 2 attack every time you play a card to the left of her while she's in your hand. Since she has tradable, you can just keep trading her whenever she reaches the left side of your hand, and then once you draw her again, the cycle will begin anew for potentially infinite power. Power. I must have more power. Now, you may be looking at this card and thinking, wait a second, Russian tradable didn't exist back in Whispers of the Old Gods. Well, that's because this video will be following a certain rule set. You'll see these cards are meant to be released in standard Hearthstone today, using modern keywords. In addition to that, the plan is also that each expansion would re-release to standard alongside the corresponding Demon Hunter cards, and I've also made new mini sets that would also release to standard alongside these cards. There will be a link to that series at the end of this video. But speaking of those mini sets, in my mini sets for Whispers of the Old Gods, I made a new Cthulhu card that is a Titan and would completely replace the old version of Cthulhu in standard. Check out the link in the description to see that Cthulhu. But this new Cthulhu would still receive the bonuses from any cards that buff him. So I've also made a card for Demon Hunter that buffs your Cthulhu, and this other one that triggers a bonus if your Cthulhu has 10 or more attack. The expansion after Whispers of the Old Gods was… Mean Streets of Gadget Set. Mean Streets also had 9 cards for each class, with 1 legendary each, and the legendary I made for Demon Hunter is… Agon the Arsonist. It's burning time! Agon is a 3 mana 4 3 demon with rush, and when he dies, he will give a random card in your hand an outcast effect to re summon Agon. In Mean Streets, every class was part of a gang. Hunter Paladin and Warrior joined the Grimy Goons, Mage Priest and Warlock joined the Cabal, and Druid Rogue and Shaman joined the Jade Lotus. Each gang had 3 neutral cards, only usable by the classes in the gang. And when I made my mini sets, I made a new gang for Death Knight and Demon Hunter, called the Wretched Saints. You can see that 3 neutral cards here. The cards for this gang mostly centered around the Wretched Blade weapon, which is a token that many cards will equip and then give a permanent stat bonus, which means that the next time you equip the weapon, it will keep those stats. I already made a lot of cards that center around Wretched Blades for Demon Hunter in the mini set, but here is one more that you could use. The next expansion released was Journey to Unguru. Journey to Ungur was the first expansion to release 10 cards for each class, with 2 legendaries each. One of those legendaries were the legendary quests, so I've also made a legendary quest for Demon Hunter. Surprise Invasion costs 1 mana, like all quests, and you need to attack with the hero 4 times while you have 4 or more attack to complete it, and then you will be rewarded with the Legion Laser. The Legion Laser is a 5 mana spell that will summon a token of the same name onto the battlefield, which will deal damage equal to your hero's attack to all enemies at the end of your turns. This token has no attack or health and can't be interacted with, similar to the portal from Sargeras or the Warlock Unguru quest, and it can only be removed with effects like Reno. Unguru was also the first expansion to add actual synergy between the cards for each class, so I made a couple cards that support this new quest. Journey to Unguru introduced the keyword Adapt, which allows you to pick one of three bonuses. With its return to standard, I've made three new adaptations you'll be able to choose from, as you can see on the screen here. And I've also made this new card for Demon Hunter, which adapts. Like I said earlier, Unguru had two legendaries for each class, so the other legendary I made for Demon Hunter is... Blaze Runner. Blaze Runner is a 4 mana 7 7 elemental with rush, wow! But when you play him, he will equip a 1-1 silver totem for your opponent, which is poisonous to Blaze Runner. 
Still, this means you'll probably get a good trade and deal 7 damage to your opponent when he kills it, and it can even be used to destroy any weapon your opponent already has equipped. The expansion after Journey to Nguru was Knights of the Frozen Throne. Knights of the Frozen Throne also had 10 cards for each class, with 2 legendaries each, and one of those legendaries were the Death Knight hero cards. I've of course also made a hero card for Demon Hunter, Runesmith Illidan. Become a vessel of darkness! Runesmith Illidan costs 3 mana and gives 5 armor, but he doesn't have an immediate effect. Instead, he will influence your deck building by allowing you to choose a single Death Knight rune and then include cards from that rune in your deck. What this means is that once you add runes with Illidan to your deck, you will have access to any standard Death Knight card that has just one rune, and then once you add one to your deck, you will only have access to other Death Knight cards with that same rune. Illidan's hero power is Rune Glaives, which will give your hero plus one attack this turn for one mana, like the regular Demon Hunter hero power, but you will then be able to choose a rune empowerment. You will be able to choose one of three bonuses that further empowers your hero's attack this turn. You could choose Blood Empowerment and gain lifesteal in addition to your plus one attack this turn. Or you could choose Frost Empowerment and then you will also freeze any character you damage this turn alongside your plus one attack. Finally, you could choose Unholy Empowerment and gain plus two attack this turn. Pick an Empowerment and destroy the enemy hero. Was that all the fury you could muster? Like the expansion before it, Knights of the Frozen Throne came with specific deck archetypes for most classes. I've also tried making an archetype for Demon Hunter, and since Knights of the Frozen Throne was also the expansion that introduced Lifesteal, I figured this package could revolve around Lifesteal. This Lifesteal package would be further supported by Demon Hunter's final legendary, Godfather Brawn Jam. <laughs> Brian Jam is a 4 mana 3 5 undead with lifesteal. In addition to that, he also has an aura effect. Whenever you restore health to a hero while he's on the battlefield, he will reduce the cost of a random card in your hand by the same amount as the health you restored. Wow! Well, that's all I had time for in this video, but I do plan on continuing this with the cards for the next expansions, until Demon Hunter has cards for all expansions. So if you liked what you saw in this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future episodes. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.